Hi, I'm a good law abiding citizen of India and I'm here to share the horrible experience I had with the top notch hospitals of Delhi. Past two days I'm not able to come out of the trauma what I faced at the hands of Medanta Hospital Gurgaon. My son, who is an adult, needs a blood procedure every month because of a lifestyle condition he has past 25 years. It is a life-saving thing for him and he cannot do without it. Post his COVID test and all his treatments, it was his time to get that monthly procedure done. But to our alarm, for four days we kept going to all the hospitals of Delhi, but they would not give us the bed for one day. All they were interested was to take the bed for at least 10 to 12 days and that too after paying a package of 15 to 20 lakhs. I kept on saying that he just needs a blood blood transfusion, a blood procedure which will just take four hours and which is a routine with every hospital and they know about it but they would not listen to us. I kept going to all the top notch and even the small hospitals. I went to Max Saket, I went to Colmet, I went to City Hospital, I went to Apollo Hospital, I went everywhere best possible even the small nursing homes they would refuse point blankly. Now I tried using all the pulls and the references but I could not still get it. After long wait, my brother tried his best and then he got me a room at Medanta Hospital in Gurgaon. All they wanted me was to get my son admitted there and they point blankly told us nobody is going to accompany him because of the corona scare we had, which we quickly agreed to. Now once when my son early morning at 8.30 gets to the hospital after one one and a half hours we get a call from the hospital to transfer two lakh rupees immediately i was shocked i said you had given us three thousand two hundred rupees for the procedure plus the room charges what is the two lakh rupees for straight away they kept you know they relentlessly refused and said whatever the things are they are different as of now you have got to pay two lakhs or then we are not able to do the procedure i argued with them i made them understand and we will not believe they started negotiating with me like a sabji mandi they said okay how much are you ready to give would you give one and a half okay would you give one lakh okay give us nabbe hazar rupiah this was the kind of scenario and that too on the telephone i kept on the phone and i called the person who had arranged the bed for me and when they spoke to each other did i get a call okay ma'am you can deposit twenty five thousand rupees which was also more, but then I just kept quiet and we transferred the money. Now my son who's there in the hospital at 8.30 in the morning, the whole day till 6.30, nobody entered his room, neither a nurse, nor a doctor, nor a peon. He kept asking for a glass of water, he kept asking for hot water, he kept asking for lunch, he wanted to talk to the doctors, but nobody would come. He kept ringing bell, nobody would come. Till 6.30 in the evening, nobody came. At 9.30 afterwards, after, at 9.30 in the night, the procedure began, that too without the doctor. The nurse came in and she started the procedure and she went away. Crossing our fingers and doing the prayers, we said, okay, you know, let the things go on smoothly. And little did we realize when we came to know that the procedure, only half the procedure they were giving. I again started calling doctors in the middle of the night to which they said, oh, okay, they totally forgot about it and never mind, they'll do early in the morning. We again kept quiet and we prayed and then early in the morning they began the procedure which ended at 8 o'clock. Now my son was ready to be discharged. He was all ready. We started calling at the hospital and they again started with the same negotiations you have to pay this much amount of money more and then only can you discharge your son that was again something which was like which made us numb how can they talk like this i again called that person in between you know and they that person also just said whatever best you can do you do and just get out of it it completely shook us what is this all about but because our son was there, we agreed to it. We again transferred the amount of money they wanted. But still, still they would make the calls and they kept asking us all irrelevant questions. What kind of a COVID test? What kind of a treatment? Where did you go? When did you go? How did you go? I kept on requesting them, ma'am, all this, if you had to ask, you should have asked at the time of admission and not at the time of discharge. When my son has finished with his procedure, payments are paid, discharge slip is made, summary is written, why are you not allowing him to go? 
to this they started again asking different questions and in the meantime my son called me that mom there is a nurse who has come with 12 or 15 vials and they want to take my blood and they are saying this is the protocol of the hospital to do the blood test I kind of screamed on the phone do not let them touch anything of yours you know tell them we do not want any test and that you are going to get discharged the nurses went away and again the hospital people are calling they are trying their best to convince me do this do that kind of a test the government will not allow this the hospital will not allow this and it was 4 30 in the evening without him being given a glass of water and mind it the room rent i was paying is 15000 rupees and not even a sip of water was he given then at the time at 4 30 I lost my mind. I started screaming. I started threatening them. If you do not allow my son to move out of the hospital, I am coming with the police. I am going to call the women's cell and the police and I am right away marching there. To which they call my son and they say, your mom is speaking rudely to us and whatever best and done, you want to go, you go. We are not going to allow you to go from the lift from here. You know, He was on the 11th floor. Ten times he went till the lift, but the lifts were locked. They would not allow him to go down. It was like as if he was made a hostage. He was a more he was made a hostage in the hospital just for make you know to to meet their demands. Just to meet their demands, he was made a hostage in the hospital. He was shit scared. What to do? I again pleaded they would not take my calls. I kept trying. I wanted to run away, but I knew they would not let me in the hospital because this big COVID scare is there. I again, then I again called the person who was in charge, but they also kept, you know, switched off their phones. I again requested, but they didn't listen. Then at the top of my pitch of my voice, you know, I again threatened, I accused and, you know, I really shouted and screamed and I cried. Did I come to know at six o'clock that my son called me, mom, finally somebody has come up and they're taking me down and I'm coming back in my own car. And my son drove back in 40 minutes and we could barely, barely breathe those 40 minutes. Now tell me, Mr. Kejriwal, tell me the Prime Minister of India, is this what the citizens of India are getting? We pay our taxes on time. We are doing everything best possible. You make us clap, you make us ring the bells for these kind of people? These butcher khanas what they have made? Save us from these butchers. Save us from these butchers. Today I'm an educated and aware woman. I could still fight. I could do, I could still argue. How about the people who come to their threats, who come to the scare what they put in them? I'm again telling you, nothing is required. Nothing was required. They just try to force us with their pressures and they try to make us emotional by calling taking big big names of the medicines and the treatments and something you know and you know fleece money from us these big hospitals they take big loans to make big hospitals and then they fleece money like this mr naresh trehan or i would say dr naresh trehan who is the owner of this big hospital when he comes on the tv he acts as if he's a devta of some place but does he know what is going underneath under his nose how many people are being fleeced? How many people are being killed unnecessarily? Request to the Indian people, please be alert. Be alert not only with COVID, but also with the drivers of these COVID who are driving us crazy. Look into it, Mr. Kejriwal, before it is too late. These hospitals should be shut. They should be closed down. Licenses should be cancelled. However big they are, they cannot play with our lives. They cannot play with our lives.